previous video, I talked about how Postman is now requiring cloud accounts just to use their application. You can no longer have local collections and do everything locally, which was a real shame. It's one of the ways that I used it. It was one of the reasons I recommended it to people because it was quick to get going. You can just download some software, install a collection, and boom, you've got everything locally. You're making API calls. So from my standpoint, Postman was essentially ruined. It's still a great application if you're using all the features and if you're willing to have a cloud account or even a paid cloud account. But for my personal use case, it was no longer fitting the requirements. So in that video, I asked which, you know, which software should I move to next? And I got a lot of recommendations. And from that, I've played with a lot of software over the last few months. The first one that I jumped to was Insomnia. And Insomnia is open source, which really appealed to me. And it looks a lot like Postman, but it's got some additional features, like it works better for GraphQL. Uh, so if you have a lot of GraphQL endpoints, Insomnia might be a great choice. There was one thing missing from Insomnia that didn't work for me. And that was the ability to run scripts, or at least I couldn't figure out how to run them. So one of the things that I liked about Postman is after an API call, I could use test scripts to set certain response things in environment variables and collection variables. So one of the things I would do is if I would call an auth endpoint, I'd write a script, it would grab the bearer token, add it to a variable, and I can use it in all the subsequent calls. And I haven't quite figured out how to get that same workflow down with Insomnia. Uh, so it's really good if you're making single API calls, but chaining them together seems to be a little bit more difficult. But it is open source and it is really well polished. So if you're looking for an alternative, I'd say it's worth a try. Uh, but I have moved on to other options that I think work better. So one of them is the VS Code REST extension. And I'm not sure how well supported this is, but uh, it is open source. You can install it right into Visual Studio Code. And basically, you're going to make these .http files. And then from that, you get these special links because the extension is installed. And these special links allow you to make API calls directly from VS Code. Um, and if I make that call you'll see that the response comes in on the right-hand side. So you're getting all of your headers, you're getting your JSON response, and you can even do things like chain these together where, um, where you make the first call, you can put things in variables, and you can chain that into the next call, and you can build up this, this set of API calls that you might want to do in a row. So... Um, Pulling in, here's another example of where I'm doing that. I get the access token. Using that token, I go ahead and create a cart, get the cart, etc. Um, so yeah, it, it works really well. And what I liked is that you got these separate files and that you can keep your API calls directly in with your code. So you didn't have to be bouncing between applications. Um, if things change, you could you know, commit both of them to source control and have them in the same place. It did allow you to have some settings and it used the VS Code settings to do that in order to put in some REST client environment variables. The one thing I didn't like is that I couldn't bounce around from file to file. So I'd have to put the entire chain of API calls into one single file, uh, which worked if you knew exactly what you're doing and it's a repeatable process. It wasn't great when I was just experimenting and when someone else gave me a collection um, and I just wanted to experiment around and call the different ones. So you can see I've got all of these different HTTP files and, um, you know, I can't bounce between them because I can't grab one thing from the original call and move it to the next one. So great option and I'm going to keep it installed because I think it does add value having a write in VS Code but I don't think it's the permanent solution and the permanent replacement for Postman. Thankfully, I came across yet another option. And this one is called Bruno. And Bruno seems to check all of my boxes. I haven't been playing with it long. Uh, I got excited and I wanted to make this video. But it allows you to import Postman collections. 
but after they're imported, once you have a Bruto collection, all of these become separate files. So you still get those great scripts like you did in Postman where you can, you know, pull variables out, set them in environments. You still great get a great UI. It does a really good job. And it's very familiar if you're coming from Postman. So you're getting all the features that you want and you're working locally. And when you're done working locally, if you open that collection in something like VS Code, you'll see that you're actually getting a lot of files. And these are all split up into separate files. And each file has your uh, call in it, it has your scripts. So it has everything you're seeing from the UI, but inside of a single .bru file. And so I really like this because you can do everything in GitHub or in Git. You don't have to rely on a cloud service. Uh, you can share files, you can continue to iterate on your API collection. And after playing with all of these tools, I think Bruno is the one that's going to replace Postman for me. I'm getting a new PC in a week, and Bruno's probably going to be the only one I install. So go check out Bruno, see what it, what it looks like. I'll put the links down in the description. And if there's one I missed, if there's another option I should be exploring that you think fits the needs even better, please give me a comment. Let me know. Thank you.